going pretty well with me and my guy. Yeah. Um, there's an issue though, and I'm just gonna say it because it's easier if we just talk about it. All right. He's prettier than me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not calling myself a dog here, no, but I get where I am on the Michelle Pfeiffer spectrum, all right? And like, look, this guy, he's just one of those dudes who can roll right out of bed and he throws on a pair of jeans and a t-shirt and he's great. Me? Takes me three and a half hours to look like I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know, he shows up at my job the other day and he's just like, surprise, I want to take you to a really nice restaurant. I look like shit, because I do. I mean, I dress awful for work. I, mean, I dress like right on that line where my boss might need to actually talk to me about it. Right? And it's on purpose, because I mean, I've got a degree in theater and a degree in psychology. So clearly, I work in the um, trucking industry. <laughs> so I've got to dress as masculinely as possible to keep a truck driver from hitting me over the head and raping me in Iowa again. <laughs> So we walk into this really nice restaurant. He walks in looking like an H&M model. I walk in looking like I just got off shift at a Walmart. And all I see these little bitches just turning their heads going, oh my God, oh my God. I totally don't even understand why he's with her. <gasps> Bridget, you're totally wicked, but you're totally right. You can tell. She does do anal. <laughs> yeah, the joke's on them only when they ask. They pretty much always ask. So. So, but so I, you know, I legitimately, I did start going to a gym, right? Because uh, that's kind of what you do when you start dating a dude that's more attractive than yourself, right? And a trainer guy asked me, so uh, what are your workout goals? Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of need to get this shit together before he realizes what he's working with. But uh, I, I just want to be um. Thin enough to have a shitty personality? <laughs> uh, so it's a size eight? I don't know. It's a six, by the way. It's on the fucking charts at Gold's Gym. Legitimately, that's when you can start treating dudes badly and they still fucking call you. But I'm not going to get there. I, I still eat cheeseburgers. But it's good to have goals. Yeah. But we're actually we're in a, a long distance relationship. And there's certain realities that come with that. I guess the top thing would have to be um, phone sex. Awkward, awkward phone sex. I mean, awkward because I'm bad at it, right? I mean, look, I can't talk during regular face-to-face -face sex without eventually sounding like a, a really supportive Minnesota-born teammate. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Oh, my. You're just working that spot there, aren't you? Oh, it's that spot, don't you know? Oh, you got bitch. Oh, you can't do that shit on the phone. More awkward still by the fact that I live with my mother. <laughs> Can't do that in the house, so I'm out in the driveway. <laughs> I got a strangely close relationship to my postal carrier. He's happy. He's happy. <laughs> what else is true when you're in a long distance relationship? Um, oh, <laughs> maintenance of the yonder regions. Yeah, that's come to a complete halt. <laughs> I mean, nobody's down there. It's just pure 1970s Sasquatch, just right there. <laughs> that image is free with the show. You're very welcome. Yeah, take that home. Yeah. Yeah, but being that I'm in a long distance relationship, I, uh, I have a lot of time, so I, I watch Netflix quite a bit. Yeah. Specifically, I like to watch those um, like true crime documentaries, because I like to be... Um, Afraid in my house at 2 in the morning? <laughs> yeah. Specifically, I like to watch the, the, the detective shows that walk you through how they used to solve murders in the 70s and 80s. Because you get to see the guy that was on the case at the time. It's always this like slightly overweight white guy with a white button-up shirt. The fabric is just see-through enough that you get a little nipple action. <laughs> Despite the fact that he is seated for the entire interview, he is red and sweaty and out of breath the entire time. <laughs> So you get to see this guy while he basically walks you through why they didn't solve shit quickly. So my favorite one is, uh, we knew where he was going to be. We knew when he was going to be there. Hell, we knew who he was going to do it to. We just didn't make it in time. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you saying that you missed your murder prevention?